Introduction You can go as back as 1500 BC to find records of China's history as it was ruled by Shang Dynasty in that era. Ancient historical texts related to China begin from that era. These records include records of the Grand Historian and Bamboo Annals. It is possible that history of China is older than this, but it is described in historical literature that there were no method for structured writing before that particular period. World-famous Yellow River is said to have served as cradle of Chinese civilization. However, it has been discovered that cultures were originated along various regional centers scattered around both Yellow River and Yangtze rivers. They had been there since Neolithic era. China is considered world's oldest civilizations thanks to its continuous history that is longer than thousands of years. Civilization of China is also referred as one of the civilization cradles. 10,046 to 256 BC was the golden age for Chinese culture, literature and philosophy. Back in that era, China was under rule of Zhou dynasty. All Chinese culture, literature and philosophy went through great development during that period. In 8th century BC, several internal and external pressures started to weaken Zhou dynasty. In that very same century, Zhou Empire was broken down into various states fighting with each other. This period was known as Spring and Autumn period that later led China to face Warring States period. Such condition has been faced by China multiple times. There were many circumstances causing broken statehood in China or even a civil war. Earliest example of such situation is Chinese civil war that took place in 1927. China went through eras of multiple kingdoms and warlordism. Throughout this period, many Chinese dynasties ruled over several parts or all of China. Many empires helped China to stretch its boundaries to Qinyang and Tibet. It should be noticed that modern China has control of this kind in present time. China entered into its imperial age in 221 BC. Qin Shi Huang gathered multiple warring empires under his roof and declared his own self Emperor of Qing Dynasty. This triggered the imperial age of China. Bureaucratic system was used by some dynasties that allow them to maintain their control and superiority over vast territories far away from their capitals. Qing was last dynasty that ever existed in China. They helped noticeable existence during the time span of 1644 to 1912 AD. They were dethroned as Republic of China took charge in 1912. Republic of China failed to last long. It was replaced by People's Republic of China in 1949. It is in charge until the date. You are about to start a quick tour of this long journey of Republic of China. Chapter 1 Prehistory of China Prehistorical phase of China's history is divided into following sections or say subphases. Paleolithic more than a million years ago, the land that is now known as China was inhabited by Homo erectus. This fact has been proven since the stone tools found at Xiao Changliang site were dated as 1.36 million years old. There is an archaeological site located near the outskirts of Xihodu in Shaanxi province. It is found that the earliest use of fire by those Homo erectus was done at that very same place. It was around 1.27 million years ago. Some early proofs were also found at excavations located at Yuan Mo and Lantian. Hunan is a famous city of Dao County that has an ancient cave named Fuyan Cave. 125,000 to 80,000 BC fossilized tooth of Homo sapiens was found in that Fuyan cave. Neolithic The Neolithic Age of China is said to be outlast back into 10,000 BC. Around 7,000 BC old, agricultural proofs were found. It is found that Yangtze River and surrounding areas were agricultural sites for rice around 8,000 years ago. 
Rice was the main agricultural product for Jiahu culture that was active during the time span of 6000 to 5000 BC. This agriculture took many aspects into concern. These aspects are described in pictographs discovered at Datiwan in Ningxia. Most of them were sun, moon, gods, stars, scenes of hunting and grazing, etc. All this was written in pictographic literature. Many characters of these pictographs were similar to modern Chinese characters. These pictographs are said to have more than 8,455 different characters. Jiahu, Bampo and Dai Duan were the only civilization that has Chinese proto-writing techniques. Some scholars have managed to figure out that Jiahu were the first one to discover such techniques. This writing technique is considered the earliest Chinese writing system. There is a Peiligan culture site in Xinjiang country, located in Henan. An excavation of this site was found that there used to be a community that lost its existence somewhere between 5,500 BC and 4,900 BC. Evidence of agriculture, construction, pottery and burial of dead was found. Development in agriculture and increasing population motivated Chinese to develop the ability to redistribute and store corpse for a long time without affecting their quality majorly. This also developed the potential to support artisans and administrations among people of that era. During late Neolithic period, Yellow River Valley became centre of Yangshao culture. Agriculture of these people was the most advanced agriculture of that era. Almost every second villager of that culture was associated with agriculture directly or indirectly being involved in related activities. Yang Shao culture enjoyed their existence during 5000 and 3000 BC. They were later superseded by a Longshan culture that existed between 3000 BC and 2000 BC. Bronze Age there have been multiple evidences found indicating that Chinese history witnessed a glorifying Bronze Age. Bronze artifacts found at Majia Yao cultural site are one of these evidences. Majia Yao culture was there for almost a half decade during 3100 BC and 2700 BC. Not only here, ancient northeastern China is said to have also witnessed Bronze Age. Lower Xiajiajian culture existed between 2200 BC and 1600 BC. This culture also represents the Bronze Age of China. Chapter 2 Ancient China The time span between 2100 BC and 221 BC is considered as ancient period of China. This period began with the domination of Qia dynasty in 2100 BC and ended as the Empire of China broke down into multiple warring states in about 470 BC. Jia Dynasty In the Chinese historical records described above, Jia Dynasty was the first described dynasty. Its magnificent existence was recorded in the time span of 2100 BC to 1600 BC. Many historical researchers still doubt if the dynasty was actually there. However, there was some archaeological evidence found that were enough to prove their existence to be legit. There was a writing found that originated in 2nd century BC. In that writing, Sima Qian described that Jia dynasty was founded in 2200 BC. However, this date was never corroborated. Most historians connect the existence of Jia dynasty with early Tu and Henan, since there are many historical sites related to culture of Jia dynasty. On these sites, bronze smelters were found that is said to be from 2000 BC. Early markings and writings are also found at those sites from Jia dynasty's era. Those pottery and shell tend to be ancestral of modern Chinese characters. There were only a few clear records found that do match with Shang oracle bones and Zhou bronze vessel writings. That leaves Cha dynasty's era and culture poorly understood. If mythology is considered, 
Battle of Ming Tiao put an end of Cha dynasty completely somewhere in 1600 BC. Shang Dynasty There were, alcohol there were archaeological proofs found to prove that Shang Dynasty existed between the period of 1600 BC and 1046 BC. Shang Dynasty's era is divided into two sets or parts. First one is the earlier Shang period. Sources and proofs about earlier Shang era can be found in Erligan, Zhengzhou and Shangcheng. The second half is known as later Shang or Yin period. Proofs about this second half can be found at Anyang that is known as Henan in modern times. Henan or Anyang was once one of the nine capitals of Shang dynasty, probably the last one. It served as ninth capital city during 1300 BC to 1046 BC. Shang dynasty produced 31 emperors. The main capital of Shang dynasty was moved six times in total. Yin became their last main capital, among nine others, in 1350 BC. Zhou dynasty In Chinese history, Zhou held the tables for the longest time. They lasted from 1046 BC to 256 BC. That is almost the period of 800 years. Zhou dynasty begins to spring by the end of 2nd millennium BC. From the beginning, they were overrunning the territory of Shang. They apply their rule over their territory using semi-feudal ruling system. Zhu lived in the western endings of Shang. Zhou leader earlier served as western protector of Shang Empire. Later on, a Zhu ruler named King Wu managed to rebel against and successfully defeat Shang in the Battle of Muye, with little assistance of his brother named Duke of Zhu. Zhu decided to follow the path of Mandate of Heaven ruling method. His ruling strategies were influential for almost any succeeding dynasty. According to this system, it was believed that the royal house should be overthrown when a natural disaster occurs in great number or when the emperor loses his concerns for people. A new house was grand mandate of heaven in such conditions. Initially, they moved their capital a farther west. Their last capital was located near River Wei, that part is not known as Qian in modern world. They did so because expansion of Yangtze River Valley became even handier from there. This is considered the first ever migration of population happened in the history of northern and southern China. Spring and Autumn Period The time span between 722 BC and 476 BC is known as Spring and Autumn Period. By the end of 8th century BC, Power in empire of China started to decentralize. In Chinese history, this decentralization is spring and autumn period after the name of spring and autumn annals. The decentralization was trigger as military forces under the command of Zhou dynasty began to assert their power and vie for hegemony. Situation became more aggressive as invasion for the northwest began. Qin were also part of this invasion, they forced Zhu dynasty to move their capital east to the Luoyang. The period in which Luoyang served as capital of Zhu is known as period of Eastern Zhu, which is an important phase of Zhu dynasty. In the spring and autumn period, the central power of Zhu dynasty started to fall apart. In this phase, more than hundred individual states were rose. Local strongmen were responsible for handling the political powers of these states. They continued to serve their subservience to Zhu King, however, in name only. Some local leaders from some of their states even started using royal titles before their names. Some of these hundred states were as small as a little village with fortification. By the end of 6th century BC, all the smaller states were defeated and annexed by a larger one. Southern states such as Chu and Wu claimed independence from Zhu Empire. At the end of this era, all major states were well established. 
China moved towards warring state period as three major families, Zhao Wei and Han, started to fight for Jin state. Warring States Period China faced several political consolidations until 5th century BC was about to end. As a result, China was divided into seven prominent states as that period. These states constantly fought each other during 476 BC and 221 BC. This period of around two centuries is known as Period of Warring States. Until 256, only Zhu kind remained as a nominal. However, with only little power left on his side. During the Warring States period, the neighbouring states were annexed. This territory also included the areas of modern Sichuan and the Ning. These areas were under governance of local administrative system known as commandry and prefecture. The system was said to be invented in spring and autumn period. It can still be seen in the areas of modern Shang and Jian. Ying Zheng, a king from Qing family, was the one to trigger the final expansion of Warring States period. Thanks to his intelligent politics and warring strategies, he managed to get all six major powers under his roof. Then he also annexed all major regions including Zhejiang, Fujiang, Guangdong and Guangxi in 214 BC. His achievements made him the first emperor who got entire China under his rule, Qin Shi Huang. Chapter 3 Imperial China Part 1 the time span of 221 BC to AD 1911 is known as imperial phase in Chinese history. Since it is too long, we had to divide the phase into two separate chapters. In this chapter, you will learn about the first half that lasted from BC 221 to AD 618. Qin Dynasty Qin Shi Huang managed to unify entire China. However, this unification merely lasted 12 years only. They ruled unified China from 221 BC to 206 BC. During his governance, he managed to conquer major parts, including Han Chinese homeland. He strongly forced them to stay under the rule of legalist government that operated from his capital, Xiangjiang. Qin Emperor handled his duty nicely in military fashion, but failed to do the same in peacetime. He faced major political oppositions and internal rebels. For centralizing his states, he connected the borders of his conquered states with a wall, making the first Great Wall of China. In 206 BC, Qin Shi Huang died of unnatural death due to consuming mercury pills. His empire fell to the dust as it lost its capital to the rebels. It eventually triggered the rise of a new dynasty of unified China. Han Dynasty They were noticeable present in the history of China from 202 BC to AD 220. Western Han Liu Bang was the founder of Han Dynasty. He collapsed the short-lived Qin dynasty by emerging a victorious civil war. A golden age was started in Chinese history as a stable dynasty was born. Qin dynasty In AD 9, Wang Mang claimed the mandate of heaven and ended the Han dynasty. Then short-lived Qin dynasty was found by him. He launched the large programs for nationalization and redistribution of lands that were highly unsupported by local and holding families. Such instability brought a chaos and eventually loss of many territories. Wang Mang was killed by an enraged peasant in AD 23. Eastern Han Many land-holding and merchant families located at Luoyang helped Emperor Guangwu to reinstate the dynasty of Han. Since Luoyang is located at the east of former capital of Hans, is known as Eastern Han Dynasty. Emperors Ming and Zhang managed to get glories for this dynasty with multiple military and cultural achievements. 
they defeated Zhongnu Empire without having any major difficulty. Later on, they started to conquer Panes and territory of Caspian Sea that eventually opened the Silk Road once again. Science and technology were at its peak during this era, along with developing culture and trade with Western world. Some Roman embassies are also recorded to be there in the period of AD 166 and AD 284 as well. Three Kingdoms The time span of AD 220 to AD 280 is known as Three Kingdoms phase, since three major dynasties were struggling with each other to claim themselves as emperors of unified China. A second century arrived amidst land acquisitions, invasions and feuding between consult clans, and eunuchs were declined by the empire. The warlord era was triggered in A.D. 184 as Yellow Turban Rebellion broke out. Three major states were suffering from predominance in this era. Some historians often refer this period as Romance of Three Kingdoms. In 208 A.D., Cao Cao reunified the northern China. Later, his son proclaimed the Wei dynasty in 220 A.D. Eventually, Shu and Wu also declared them as independent states. Both of these were formal rivals of Wei dynasty. The states that existed in period of Qin and Han, now all proclaimed by these three major dynasties. This romance ended in 265 AD, as Jin dynasty dethroned Wei, strongest, strongest than other two, and reunified the country once again, however, for a short period only. Jin Dynasty Jin Dynasty left their heavy influence of Chinese history between 265 AD and 420 AD. Jin Dynasty began with a strong base, however it was weakened by several fights among imperial princes. As a result, non-Han Chinese settlers rebelled and successfully captured Luoyang and Chang'an in the very beginning era of Jin. In 317, a Jin prince became the emperor and managed to hold southern China for another century. In modern world, it is referred as Western Jin. While southern China was desperately held by Jin, northern China went through a constant series of rebels by Turks, Mongols and Tibetans. Xiangbei, Ji, Di and Qiang were main states that suffered such situations. Some of them were allowed to live in frontier areas within the Great Wall of China since the Han era. A major warfare was provoked during the era of Sixteen Kingdoms. It eventually triggered a full-scale Han-Chinese conflict that even stretched far south covering the basin and delta of Yangtze. Northern and Southern Dynasties the period of A.D. 420 to A.D. 589 is known as the era of northern and southern dynasties in the imperial Chinese history. This era began in early 5th century. It was a period in which northern and southern halves of China were ruled by parallel regimes. The southern half that was once ruled by Eastern Jin was then ruled by Liu Song, He Liang and Chen. All these dynasties were led by Han Chinese ruling families. Jiang Kang, that is now known as Nanjing, served as capital for these southern rulers. The northern China was completely reunified by Northern Wei in 439 AD, as they took over almost every state that once belonged to 16 states. This northern kingdom was later split into eastern and western Wei, which eventually became northern Qi and northern Zhu, respectively. These regimes were dominated by Xiangbei or Han Chinese, especially those who were married of Xiangbei families. Such division of China never resisted the spread of Buddhism. This long period of division ended in A.D. 589, as Sui dynasty once again managed to unify China as a whole. In the gap of four centuries between Han and Sui dynasties, China remained unified for merely 24 years only, during the rule of Western Jin. Sui dynasty 
Sui dynasty lasted for a short period of 29 years from AD 589 to AD 618. However, it witnessed three emperors. Regardless to its short period of existence, it played a major role in the history of China. Sui managed to reunite China under the lead taken by Emperor Wen of Sui. They established many institutions that were later adopted by their successors known as Tang. They implemented a government system that was divided into three different departments and six ministries. They also regulated use of standard currency in form of coins throughout their entire territory. They improved the defence system of Great Wall and provided official support in spreading Buddhism. While doing such developments, they overused their treasure and collapsed just like Qin in a very short period of their existence. Chapter 4 Imperial China, Part 2 In this chapter, we will discuss second half of Chinese imperial age, the time span from AD 618 to AD 1911, is referred as second half of imperial age in the Chinese history. Tang Dynasty Tang lasted for almost 300 years, starting from AD 618 to AD 1907. This period is often referred as peak point of imperial age. Emperor Gaozu found Tang Dynasty in AD 618. It is golden age of Chinese civilization since the major developments it faced in the fields of culture, art, literature, poetry and science. Buddhism has dominated during this period. Chang was the national capital and the largest city in that time world. The second emperor of Tang, named Taizong, launched a full-scale military campaign with multiple goals. Some of his main goals were to eliminate neighbouring states, applying tributary system, keeping the Silk Road open and expanding borders. In the late Tang period, they faced many rebels due to corrupt rulers. A noticeable rebel was Huang Chao Rebellion in AD 874 that lasted for almost a decade until AD 884. Multiple and continuous rebels caused their power to shrink. Zhu Wen's usurpation finally made the dynasty fall, triggering the Fragmation Era. Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms During AD 907 and AD 960, political disunity had begun to spring in Tang and Song. The period is known as Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period. During this era, China was a multi-state system in every manner. Traditional imperial heartland of China was ruled by five regimes after one another namely known as Liang, Tang, Jin, Han and Zhu. Small and stable regimes were under rule of Han rulers managed to get over south and western China. That concluded as ten kingdoms. The coup of later Zhu general Zhu Quan Yin triggered the end of the era. The era was completely ended as Song Dynasty was established in AD 960. Song Dynasty managed to annihilate the remaining parts of Ten Kingdoms and reunified China. Song, Liao, Jin and Western Jia Dynasties Song Dynasty was established by Emperor Taizu in AD 960. Kaifeng served as capital city of Song Dynasty. Until the arrival of AD 979, Song managed to unify most of the China. Outskirts of China were ruled by Kitan Liao Dynasty that lasted between AD 907 to AD 1125. It ruled over northern China. Northwestern provinces of China were ruled by Western Jia dynasty during AD 1032 to AD 1227. In AD 1004, the cavalry of Liao forced Song to submit. In AD 1115, Zhechen tribes revolted against Liao Empire successfully and established Jin dynasty. In AD 1125, Jin turned the tables and completely took over Liao dynasty. 
In AD 1157, Kaifeng was sacked, ending the Iraq Northern Song dynasty. They eventually conquer the entire northern China under their roof. Survivors from Song dynasty gathered in southern China and started ruling areas near Huai River. This era was ended by Mongol conquest of western Cha in 1227, Jin dynasty in 1236 and southern Song dynasty in 1279. Yuan dynasty Yuan dynasty took birth in A.D. 1271 and lasted until A.D. 1368. It took birth as Kublai Khan, grandson of Genghis Khan, claimed the title of Emperor of China, making it a part of Mongol Empire. Mongols eventually conquered Jin Dynasty in northern China. After a lot of bloodshed, southern dynasty fell in A.D. 1279. Yuan Dynasty, that was a Mongol dynasty, proved itself to become first ever empire to control entire center China. Then begin a series of Mongol civil war that lasted until A.D. 1304. Before Mongol invasion, Chinese population was about 120 million. In A.D. 1279, as Mongol conquest was fully completed, the population of China was merely 60 million. There were several reasons behind this. 25 million people were killed due to incurable diseases, Mongol killings, wrapped up rest of the work. Ming Dynasty Ming Dynasty left its influences for almost two centuries from A.D. 1368 to A.D. 1644. Yuan Dynasty was not able to last more than a century since there was a vast population against Mongol rule. After sort of struggles and revolts, Yuan Dynasty was dethroned by Ming Dynasty in A.D. 1368. The founder of Ming dynasty was more interested in developing agriculture than anything else. The dynasty built up a strong government to maintain the law and order over their vast empire. They were also interested in stretching Chinese borders beyond the traditional limits. For instance, they captured and held Vietnam for about 25 years. They built a large and powerful navy to eliminate any threats on coastal borders. Defences were enhanced during that era. They established a standing army holding about two million of troops. As Second Mongol invasion began in A.D. 1449, Ming switched their stands from aggressive to defensive. They built Great Ming Wall, repaired and redesigned Great Wall of China. Thanks to their vast navy, they managed to repulse Portuguese twice, first in A.D. 1521 and again after a year in A.D. 1522. In A.D. 1557, they allowed Portuguese to settle in Macau for their trades. Macau remained in Portuguese hands until A.D. 1999. During the years of 1622 and 1624, they forced Dutch to settle in Taiwan. Fall of Ming was triggered as they lost the Battle of Lialu Bay in 1633. They were dethroned to Kok Singa in 1662. Qing Dynasty It is the last imperial dynasty that lasted between A.D. 1644 to A.D. 1911. It is the second dynasty to take the whole China and its entire population under their rule. Their rebel against Ming does not give them much trouble as the last emperor of Ming committed suicide and Qing came into power. That year was A.D. 1644. In next half century, Qing managed to take the whole territories ruled by Ming dynasty under their roof. These territories also include Tibet and Mongolia. After enjoying about a peace for two centuries, their problems began to tease them in 19th century. They were defeated by English twice in their history. Fall of the Qing was triggered with the Boxer Rebellion in the beginning of 20th century, who rebelled opposing foreign influences in northern China. Chapter 5 Republic and People's Republic of China Republic of China Creation of a republic in China was triggered as most of the population was frustrated with Qing court's rule. These rebellions were greatly influenced by Sun Yat-sen, who later turned out to become the founder and first ever president of Republic of China that was formed on 12th of March 1912. 
due to some political mistakes made by him, Chinese civil war was triggered. At the end of the Chinese civil war, Kuomintang was pushed out of the mainland that forced the government to relocate at Taipei with control of a few islands. It fell and could not even last for a century. It came to an end in A.D. 1949, two years after British forces released freedom in most of their colonies. People's Republic of China After the end of Chinese Civil War, Communist Party of China became self-declared winners since they were holding the control of the mainland of China. Then came the historical day, October the 1st of A.D. 1949. Mao Zedong claimed the People's Republic of China. It is also referred as Communist China or Red China or PRC. PRC was shaped by a series of events and a pre-made plan implemented for five years. Mao was too aggressive in implementing his rules over the population. He caused executions, deaths and forced labours. A cultural revolution was launched by Mao and his allies in the year of A.D. 1966. As he died in 1976, a new era of politics begun in China. Conclusion I agree that this book was not detailed enough to contain every small thing in Chinese history. Yet this book covers all the events that are important enough. The journey on Chinese history has gone through many phases as described in the book. From being warfare for multiple ruling families to being one of the most developed nations in the modern world. It took thousands of years. The final phase of their journey was the rule of Qing dynasty. They expanded their boundaries even past the current limits of modern China. However, it is now one of the most successful republics around the globe.